Hello. Good morning, tea timers. I hope you're all good and, and um, snuggled in. I have today, I'm drinking the Rocky Mountain tea blend that um, Murchis had given me, and it's really good. It's a nice, strong tea, and it has, a, it's Assam and Ceylon teas, and it's, it's, a, it's a good wake up, good morning tea. It's a good wake up tea. Hi. It's a good wake up tea and I'll take a soup. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'll take a few sips and then. Okay, so now today we're having the draw for the money that we earned, the little tiny bits of money which add up to a little bit after a few months um, for the hundred dollars. Dee 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 to have another sip of tea for the hundred dollars for from the commercials of the YouTube shows. I probably should have got confetti or something. Oh well, here we go. Who's it gonna be this time? Okay, I just get a grab one. Okay, we got one. Who is it? Ta-da! Okay, so I'll be sending it off to you and um, and I'll let you guys know next time we get up to the amount for another draw. Hurrah, way to go. I, as you see, I was going to, I, I think it's, I just did this because, how would you pronounce it? Candice, 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 is that how you pronounce it? Anyway, <clears throat> gave me a little bit of time to do it. Okay, so I'll put this here. Congratulations, and um, I'll answer some questions. Where, oh, you know, uh, it's way over here. I got offered a movie this week, um, but it goes a little too soon. But it, I didn't, so I didn't read the script because I'm. I don't want to be uh, tempted to go off uh, into a set uh, quite yet. <laughs> but soon, 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 there's um, something else that might be in the works. So I'll uh, let you know once once we know for sure. And I'm, I'm doing my little putter, putter around writing. And I'm really enjoying not doing a full day of writing. I'm enjoying just doing a chunk and then having time, daylight hours to enjoy. So that's, that's working out pretty well. And uh, I'll answer some questions. This book, this book that we started, both sides of the pages, it, we're almost done. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Let's see. Um, okay, I'll just uh, start here. Uh, the Uniplex. The thing about celebrating milestone. Oh no. <laughs> the neighbor just started their construction again. Oh well, better than not having a tea time, I guess, huh? I'm not sure what they're grinding. That sounds like they might be doing tiles. Maybe they're tiling a bathroom because that's always pretty noisy. Or, or maybe they're digging up pavement on their driveway. Who knows? But you'll just have to not pay attention. <laughs> I say that as much for me as for you guys. Okay. Um, the thing about celebrating milestone birthdays, it's better than the alternative. When you can't celebrate them, <clears throat> you're dead. <laughs> That's true, that's what I tell myself too. Sometimes, you know, when where you think, oh gosh, oh my gosh, I've gotten so gray, I've gotten so wrinkly, I've gotten, and I think, no, much better than the alternative. I mean, you know, that I have the privilege of, of have had the privilege of getting older, of meeting my grandchildren, of, you know, seeing myself and my husband get, get older and, and, and my children grow. I mean, what a blessing that's been. So um, when I start, the vanity pops in and it's like, ooh, oh, oh dear, oh, what's that? Everything's wrinkling and sagging. <laughs> and then I just tell me that first of all, this is the youngest I will ever be. And uh, because I'm only gonna get older from here. So this right now, this is like, ooh. <laughs> If I get lucky enough to live another 20 years, I'll look back on this time and say, oh, honey, you should have just walked around and reveled in the way you look. So, you know, because as I look from my age to 20 years ago or 
40 years ago. And, you know, when I think of when I was a very famous actress and everybody's like, oh, you're so beautiful. And all I could see was the flaws. All I could see was what, what wasn't, what wasn't what I thought the ideal, whatever that is, person was. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, it's, it, and, but then I look back and I'm like, oh, sweet. And I wish I could have just given that person a hug and said, those things are so small and inconsequential things that feel like, you know, that it's going to make or break you really. I mean, it is, I guess, all of those little things and that you work through do make you who you are. But, um, you know, I, I, I should have maybe not went, done all those years of covering up in big baggy sweaters and big baggy clothes and trying to hide. I should have been like, yeah, look at me. <laughs> I look great. But I never felt like I looked great. And so it's, it's, um, it's interesting that, you know, you can always look. And I think especially nowadays, I, oh my gosh, like, uh, you know, the young people, what they have to go through now because everything is so beautified on social media and um i just whoa that i think that would be even harder but to, but to know that you know when you guys are so kind and you post pictures of me when i was younger and and um you know all decked up for the movies just remember that even if i was the age that you were or something they had a full-time makeup person doing my face and another person doing my hair and another person getting my wardrobe and um, somebody lighting me so that I would look good in the photos. So that's, that's uh, something to remember is that um, you can look at people that you look up to and be like, oh man, they have this perfect life and they look so beautiful. But, but, but movie stars and act you know acting and music people you know all the people or just social media influencers they know how to light and they they know how to do all these things and they have sometimes they have huge teams like i had a huge team making me look you know that way and so it can be sometimes a little bit of a shock <laughs> When you think, oh, you know, okay, that's that's uh, what it, it is. But even then, okay, even then, with all those people working on me to make me look good, when I'd see those films, I would be so embarrassed. And all I could see were the, you know, the mole, the moles or beauty marks on my face or whatever you want to call it, you know, and and uh, and remembering that my first agent had told me that I should go to plastic surgeon and and get them all removed and and me not knowing like oh my gosh but i don't want to do that you know it's it's all part of me so um i don't know how we got on that oh better off than <laughs> uniflex better off than being dead okay um you were talking about youtube names my account name came about because my husband made this account years ago and he called it after the name of his home theater because he only has one screen in the home theater, uh, I never would have picked this name. <laughs> I was, that was funny when she told me, or um, because I, I, um, I picked, you know, on Twitter, <clears throat> my, my moniker is Mega Monster. That's because I never expected to actually continue to do Twitter. It was when I was working on Bomb Girls and the young kids, the young women who were on that, and then there was a, a young man as well. They um, talked me into joining Twitter. And I thought, oh, well, oh, I don't know what this Twitter thing is, but I'll support our, our show, Bomb Girls. And so they signed me up in the makeup uh, room. They, they had my phone because I was new. It was my new phone. I had just gotten that too. And they signed me up and they said, what do you want to be called? And, and I thought, well, uh, I don't know what's a, I thought Twitter was like gaming or something. Cause, um, I didn't know what any of that stuff was. So I was like, Oh, well, I've got to have a, a kind of game and gangsta name kind of thing. So I thought, Oh, Meg, my name's Meg. I don't want to be Meg Tilly because you know, I, that, that would be not so, I don't know. I didn't even know if it was available. So I thought I'll do, I'll do Mega Monster. So I called myself Mega Monster, but you know, a lot of people don't know that this is, that this is my um, Twitter name, and um, forget about getting verified. <laughs> a 
<laughs> like mega monster. So whatever, that's what it is. So I understand Uniplex. I feel your pain in being stuck with the name that uh, isn't necessarily yours. I mean, mega monster is okay, I guess, but um, it was it was a fun spree while I did it, and and it was fun because I thought nobody will know it's me. Now some people know it's me, and some people don't. Uh, let's see. Um, Mark Boyce, when I see an anxiety, oh, this was talking about, um, this was due to anxiousness when we were talking about, you know, somebody said steps and I said, you know, take one step at a time. So this was uh, about that video. Uh, Mark Boyce, when I see an anxiety trigger coming at me, I identify it, catch it like a ball, put it in a basket, and hold any reaction for later. At the end of the day, I look into my imaginary basket, and if I can still identify any of the triggers, I process them. You know what? I can never identify the triggers after time has passed. We are an extremely reactive culture, and it's not healthy. I thought that was a really, um, I never actually thought of it that way, because I think also I'm, uh, uh, we're all pretty emotional creatures and I think because writing or um, writing and acting you're supposed to get all of that your feelings close to the surface so you do exercises so that you know sensory exercises and stuff so that you can tap into okay how's this feel okay how's this sitting in my character's body okay if my character is feeling that and I'm not quite there how do I how does that feel that sort of in that sort of circumstance or whatever so that you try to get in touch with all of that and i think that um this idea of capturing this ball something comes at you capturing it and putting it in in the basket to look at later and then later you're like oh well hmm oh well <laughs> it doesn't i think that's a really good uh tip for you to give us all us tea timers mark so thank you for sharing and um and uh I, I do. I think a, a lot more. What I, I also try to do is I think, I try to think, not just take it on, although I still do <laughs> because of all that exercise, but um, to to also try to see it from the other person's point of view. Or even if it was something that in your mind or your memory might not be exactly what happened, it doesn't matter because if it does feel like that did for them, then it's real. Then the pain is real. And it might be something that I did, or it might be something that I didn't, but that doesn't really matter either. It's not like, oh, who's right or wrong. It just is what it is. And feelings are feelings. And um, so I'm trying also not to, I'm trying to hear better. So I guess it's sort of like your basket thing, but I really love your idea of taking the ball, you know, if a trigger comes, because as, as we know, especially those of us who have had a certain type of, uh, you know, uh, early life, uh, they do come. And, um, and all of a sudden everything can grip up and you're like, oh no, oh no, this is, this is, oh, oh, f the fight or flight. The, and to just be like, oh, okay. So anyway, thank you for that. Um, uh, Julie Combs, happy new year to you. I am sure you will get your groove back, uh, when it comes to your writing. I'm half grooving. I'm sort of like with my writing, I'm half groovy. So I'm like those people. I'm like, you know, like when you go to a club or something way back in the day when I went to clubs, but when you go and you're dancing and, and you, you go like, okay, you know, everybody's going to dance and you want to dance and you go out and you start dancing. Well, at first you're kind of like, uh, you know, you're dancing, but you aren't quite into it. You're, you're into it, but you aren't quite like comfortable. Whereas, you know, give yourself like 15 minutes, half an hour. And by that point, you don't care if you dance weird or what, if anybody's looking at you, you're just happy and sweaty and just with the music and listening and, and letting it be part of you and, you know, just having fun. So I'm not at that part yet. <laughs> I'm at the part where you're kind of, um, I'm, I'm, on the floor now i'm not circling the floor there was a period where i was circling the floor in the writing and then and then 
and then now I'm on the floor and I'm dancing and there's moments of like, ah, oh, yeah, this is why dancing is fun or slash writing is fun. But you know, I'm not like in the like, like where it's just like, you're just, you just are dancing. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not writing in that way yet. Um, I'm writing, <laughs> but I want to get, and I'm hoping that pretty soon I'll get to the writing, dancing kind of feeling where it's just like, I can hardly wait to get to my desk. Right now I get to my desk and I do my writing, but I'm not at that point yet. But I don't know, that, let's see, what was, <laughs> I can't get to your question. Oh, I'm going off on all sorts of tangents today. Um, I was wondering when you did the movie text, if you knew the impact Essie Hinton's books, of Essie Hinton's books, and if you've ever spoken to her after becoming a writer. So I knew the impact of Essie Hinton's books because in school we read um, The Outsiders, and I, and then I went and I read everything that she had written. And I was, uh, I was quite excited. She was a, a author I really enjoyed as a teenager because she wrote how it was being a teenager. And so I was quite excited. One of the things I was excited to do was text, which was one of her books that I hadn't, maybe I hadn't read or I'd read, but it wasn't my favorite of her books. But, um, but, she, but here's the thing. You know how, if you look at her books, actually, if you go through them again, she mostly writes about young boys. And she admitted herself that she, she relates more to the young guys. So she would invite the guys over. <laughs> She'd invite Amelia and Matt over to play. I think she had a uh, pool table or something like that. But she never invited me because she said herself she didn't really like or respond to or relate to um young women and um, kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> but you know, she's allowed to like or not like whatever she does. But I, I did feel, um, I did, I did feel, it's, it's interesting. I, I did feel her eyes on me in not a flattering way. <laughs> not, not, not big. And you know, that was my first movie and it was a real, real challenging uh, time in my life as well. And I, you know, I got, I, I probably would have too. I got suckered into situations and didn't know how to deal with them during that period. So, you know, I get it. <laughs> but anyway, so I, it's funny because it's like, um, you want to be careful sometimes about meeting people who are your heroes because sometimes, sometimes uh, it's a disappointment. And, uh, not that she did anything bad. It's just, you know, me, I, I, I feel things and I see things underneath. And so, um, but I think she's a really good writer. But after that, I, I didn't read her books anymore. It's been that way with a couple of um, other authors who I like their books and I bought everything they ever wrote. And I, I really um, enjoyed their writing. But then when I met them, I was like, ooh, I don't enjoy you. Just like they're allowed not to enjoy me, I'm allowed not to enjoy them, and and then I just I don't buy their books anymore. I don't I don't like uh, I I just I I feel them differently, even if they're they're good, which is too bad. So that's where I'm always careful to um, meet people now that I I really admire because it can be sometimes a disappointment. But Jane Ann Krentz wasn't a disappointment. Oh, oh, she's got a new book out. I, I got it, I had to get it on my e-reader because I'm not going out. And when I've been trying to order things, they aren't coming in in uh, appropriate time, but it's called um, Lightning in the Mirror, I think. I think that's, anyway, I'm, I'm, I started it yesterday and I'm, Oh, I've only got like a third left to go, and it's t it it just takes off like a house out of on a house. It's like really really good, fun, and um and it's nice because it's a third of the Fog Lake the series theories. <laughs> oh yeah yeah um yeah. So it's um I think lightning in a mirror. Lightning anyway. Look it up, Jane Ann Krentz. Just look up lightning and mirror, and the word in between will show up. Um, I'll, I'll remember next time and, and let you know, but I'm really enjoying it a lot. And it's the final installment of the Fog Lake series. So everything's kind of wrapping up and it was hard to sleep last night because I kept on wanting to read. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. It's late. Okay. So I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.